And I think, you know, that's, we need to be aware of the fact that 95, because we have a different relationship, like a different value on human life. Because we don't have the same empathy because we didn't experience the same pain. Yeah? Like, I would sooner, like, kick you in the balls than <laughs> murder... I would sooner... <clears throat> It's okay, the great thing about this is, and the recording and whatnot, is that I can just chop. <laughs> it's not like the tragedy that you think it is. I'm gonna be fine, don't you worry about me. <laughs> um, although, to be fair, the joke might not land now. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever Have A Word Half Hour stand-up special recording. Please welcome to the stage your guest for the night. He is a Have A Word Hall of Famer, two-time host, three-time couch guest. He was part of the roast of Adam and Dan. He was part of the Have A Word Christmas special. Please take the roof on the roof off for Alfie Brown, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> Very nice indeed. Uh, I feel kind of wild and kind of crazy. I really, I'm, I'm, I'm very intense feeling at the moment. My uh, girlfriend has just given birth to our fourth child. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's incredible. I, I, I feel like I'm finally ready to be a father. <laughs> I think my other three are gonna be really happy about that, you know? <laughs> I uh, didn't want another child. Uh, Jessie did want another child. She really like had to convince me about doing it. So we did it and uh, like, I got to name it after my favorite Liverpool player. That was the deal. Uh, and you know, it's a good deal. I took it. I, uh, I feel like I'm a pretty good dad. Like obviously, if you think you're a good dad, you think you're a good dad because it's in your interest to believe that you're a good dad. But I think I am a good dad, you know? I, um, I realized the other day that I would die for my children. <laughs> it's a really nice realization when it hits you that you would die for your children. I, I was watching, I was in the sitting room with them and I was watching Ratatouille, so I already felt fabulous. <laughs> and I just imagined like, what if a gunman came in right now and went, okay, on the floor, shut the fuck up, on the floor, which one of you goes now? You decide, pick who dies, you decide, big boy, decide who dies. Go. Start. Now. And I would respond, well, that's an easy one, sir. I will be the one to die. Uh, that's a very easy question. Come on, ask, ask me a hard one. Come on, really, seriously. I, I will be the one to die. That's very easy indeed. Uh, uh, and I realized that I would do that. And I thought, mm, good for me. <laughs> I don't think I'd die for the three-month-old. Um, <laughs> skin, isn't it? Um, it's like some noisy skin. It's like a lot to ask for me to die for that. I think I would die for the three-month-old, but I would do it a lot more grudgingly. Like the gunman comes in and goes, which one of you two? Get on the floor. Now, who does it? Who dies? You decide. And I would go, uh, me, obviously, <laughs> but fuck! <laughs> Seriously, fine, yeah, me, obviously, but fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, fine, go on, hang on, hang on, before you do, hey, 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 shh, 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 shh. hey, what's your favourite memory? <laughs> exactly! <laughs> okay, go on then, get it over with, enjoy your life, Divock. Uh, little did I know, you know. Um, 
I feel like I'm also a good birth partner now. I was a good birth partner this time round. It only took me four goes, but I'm a good birth partner. I realised what the trick to it is. What you have to do is you have to keep on being complimentary no matter how much someone is screaming at you. Okay? It's a lot like working for James Corden. What you have to do is you have to say, um, uh, you're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well. That's what you say over and over again. You can say other stuff as well, but that's what underpins everything. You're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well. It's like the kind of drum beat in a Jerry Cinnamon song. That kind of keeps everything moving. Eight hours, you're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well. Give me my Ribena. You're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well. Don't touch my back. You're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well. Alfie, you have no idea how much this hurts. You're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well. Even though Jessie is the only person I've ever seen give birth, so I really don't know how well she was doing. Uh, <laughs> she was fine. The other thing was that you have no idea how physically involved with the person who's giving birth you have to get. You have to physically manhandle this person because they are insane with childbirth. It's a painful thing, all told. So she's going absolutely nuts, going, Rrr! and you have to, like, she's, lots of uh, the footage of uh, childbirth often takes place with the uh, woman on her back, but actually it's much more knees-based. And what you have to do is have to hold her because she keeps trying to sit down on her pussy, which is where the baby is coming out, uh, for any non-experts. Uh, <laughs> So you have, you're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well. You're so, get up! You're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well. It's like taking a puma to the vet. <laughs> you're so brave, you're so brilliant, you're doing so well is like, she was brave and brilliant and doing so well, but it's just, do you know what I mean? <laughs> After eight hours, it's not naturally what you'd say, is it? Also, like when, like usually in life, when somebody is being brave and brilliant and doing well, they don't need to be told. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? When Dame Ellen MacArthur, the sailor, <laughs> sailed the entire world by herself, she didn't ask, oh, can I take somebody with me to tell me I'm brave and brilliant and doing so well? She just did it. Also, it was sort of broadly accepted that it was Ellen MacArthur's choice to sail around the world. So it was quite hard to have sympathy with her, wasn't it? In the same way, When Jesse would say to me, Alfie, you have no idea how painful this is, I would say, yeah. That was actually on my cons list. I don't... <laughs> don't know if you remember my cons list. You know, on the day of the delivery, on the day of the birth, I was very hungover. Um, but I did not complain about that. Uh, <laughs> She had told me not to go out the night before because she might go into early labour the next day. And uh, I did, I got drunk uh, anyway. And in the, sure, so we like drinking. Uh, and then in the delivery room the next day I was hung over and she was giving birth. Jessie and I were both suffering because we got our own way. <laughs> Like, that's fun, isn't it? Because I'm making, like, a bad point with good logic. That's the fun of the bit, isn't it? That we can all enjoy the transgression of the bit. It's like a bad point, but I've used good logic to get there. That's kind of one of my things, actually. And a little spoiler alert, I'm going to be doing it again quite soon, OK? <laughs> so don't get ahead of yourselves. Uh, 
in all seriousness, like, you know, Dame Ellen MacArthur, Alex Honnold, like, you know, you guys, anything that you love doing can only happen. Any kind of amazing human feat can only be achieved because a woman gave birth. And in all seriousness, without wanting to sound too saccharine, women who have given birth deserve enormous credit and gratitude for that undertaking, I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I, I, anyway, I, I digress, I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> People often say that men will never understand the pain of childbirth. You know, that's like uses a stick to beat us with. <laughs> men will never understand the pain of childbirth. And that's true. But we'll also never understand the sort of incredible connection to the universe that you feel by growing a human soul within yourself and then over a long period having your body change and form and a kind of growing a connection to the heartbeat that's in your belly and give life into the world which is the most precious thing on earth and to have that feeling of a new uh, human in the world because of something that uh, you did and then to nurture and grow that human with your own breast, your own sustenance, your own milk, we'll, we'll never understand uh, that either. So uh, you sort of got to take the rough with the smooth with that whole pain thing, don't you? <laughs> Uh, a little while ago, uh, I was, like, just after the child was born, actually, I was texting my mate Luke, and I was saying how brilliant Jessie had done, and like, it was a difficult uh, labour, it really, really was. It took 14 hours, she was induced, which means they put a hormone in you that gets the baby out, which makes the contractions more painful, uh, so she kept saying. And... <laughs> And when, uh, like, uh, and, and, and then when it came out, she was amazing. She really was brave and brilliant and did so well. It was, it w it was incredible. And I was texting my mate Luke about this, and uh, Luke texted me back. He said, women, man, they're amazing. Us men couldn't do that. And I went, well, I could, I just wouldn't. There's a big difference there because what you get at the end isn't worth having done it. <laughs> For me. Like, I don't think getting that at the end of all of that pain is really worth what you, do you know what I mean? If you could offer me something that I wanted enough to go through that, then I would take it. If you said to me, hey, Alfie, do you want to go through 14 hours of the most mind-bending, consciousness-altering, uh, sharp and sheer pain that it's possible for a human being to experience, and at the end of that, Liverpool will win the league? I would say that's a good deal. I'll take it. I'll do that every year. I'm very happy to. I'd get Adam in to be my birth partner. Come on, lads. You're so brave. You're so brilliant. You're doing so well, man. Give me my Ribena! You're so brave, you're so brilliant! Three more pushes and then Jürgen's Reds win the fucking league! <laughs> and I think that uh, connection to life that the uh, woman who gives birth has to experience uh, is linked to how precious they deem human life to be. You know, like, the 95% uh, of murderers are men. Because men don't have that connection to what it is to make human life, to create human life, to go through that journey, that process, that longing, everything that is in, in that childbirth and uh, the miracle of life entails, men don't have a very different relationship with it, you know? For a woman, it's huge changes, long periods, longing, pregnancy, pain. That pain, like, truly alerts you to the value of human life. Whereas for me, I ejaculate, and then five years later, I'm playing PlayStation with a small purse. <laughs> and I think... That's, we need to be aware of the fact that 95, because we have a different relationship, like a different value on human life. Because we don't have the same empathy because we didn't experience the same pain. Yeah? Like, I would sooner, like, kick you in the balls than murder... I would sooner... <clears throat> it's okay, the great thing about this is, and the recording whatnot, is that I can just chop. <laughs> It's not like the tragedy that you think it is. 
I'm gonna be fine, don't you worry about me. Um, although to be fair, the joke might not land now. Um, <laughs> I would sooner kick you in the bollocks <laughs> Do you get the fucking joke or not? Like, I understand what it is to be kicked in the bollocks. I have that empathy. I don't have the same journey or emotional resonance when it comes to the value of human life. So I would sooner murder you than kick you in the bollocks. Um, and I think, you know, we all need to be aware of that, that fact. <laughs> 95% of murders are committed by men. However, 100% of murders and murderers are given birth to by a woman. <laughs> so I just think with that in mind, women who have given birth need to take a long, hard fucking look at themselves. <laughs> I, uh, it's lovely to be here and doing this here in Liverpool, my home. Uh, <laughs> and you just laugh at that because I don't sound like you, but I'm from Liverpool. Uh, I, I, all I want, like the, 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 do you know for years I've been gigging here and getting more nervous gigging here than I do anywhere else because I want your love. <laughs> and you won't give it to me. <laughs> Even when we're friends, for comedians, you're still coming up here telling me that my yellow socks are shite. And... So tote bag's fucking convenient and inexpensive. What's wrong with that? I want your love. Why don't you love me? All I want is your love. Oh no, so fucking posh lad, who's he? Bloody voice. If you say class with class and, it, and you're middle class, aren't you? I'm not middle class, I'm posh. <laughs> I just, all I ever wanted was your fucking... My mum's from Liverpool, you know? My mum, yeah. My mum's from fucking Liverpool and she comes back up here. She lost her accent because she wanted a job on Radio 4 in the 80s. And back then, uh, their big rule was you could be a woman or scouse, but don't be both. Um, <laughs> she lost, and she comes back up here and goes, hello everybody, my people. Hello, you Liverpool. Why don't you, what's going on? She's like B Michael Jackson at a Black Lives Matter rally. <laughs> identity you should accept that and I'm not saying that like you know how like you've seen the Dave Chappelle bit where he go, it's a, not a trans thing I'm not I'm, I have no desire to make any jokes about anything to do with that whatsoever I like biologists are arguing about it what chance do I have I have I have no jokes in that area I just hate that sort of joke that everybody basically shares like Chappelle does it I can identify as Chinese then well you can't like, that's not how it works. You don't have any, like, vestigial traits on your body that are remnants from when you were in your mother's womb as a Chinese fetus. <laughs> so that, but you do have nipples, don't you? From when you were a girl in the fetus. And you have a clit, that's a little dick. Uh, <laughs> We were each other. I was never Chinese. I was gonna be called Poppy, but never Zhou Guan Yu. <laughs> it just 
doesn't make any sense. If you are like, if you're, if, like, maybe your mother or your father is Chinese, then you can identify as Chinese. By the same token, if your mother or your father is a man or a woman, then you can identify as either one of those things. It works the same way. And also, my mum, I can identify as Scouse. Thank you very much. <laughs> So go on, lad, your ma's got cake. <laughs> you still use that expression? One of my favourites from the past. <laughs> Nana used to say it. Tranmere Rovens fan. Uh, <laughs> my mum's not really from Liverpool, she's from Birkenhead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 shut up. <laughs> I think I'd prefer you thought I was from London, to be honest. <laughs> mm, it's so nice to see all of you and be... And like, be, like, I can see, like, you, I, I am gonna make you laugh at some point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you will laugh at some point. I'm sh I assure you of that. It's amazing, so, like, you're so well lit. I can see everybody, including the staff at the back going. <laughs> like, not even enjoying it for seven pounds an hour. <laughs> or, or whatever it is, you might get paid more. I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> Apologize, you know, it's just nice to see people's faces. When everybody, when you're doing gigs and people were wearing masks, that was shit. You couldn't, couldn't, it's the window on the soul, it's closed. I couldn't tell who was enjoying it. And like, you know, you or you, I can see you now go, eh, not, I don't like it, eh. Such a weird thing to pull with your face when I can see you. I've put love into this. And yet still, eh, I don't like it. Well, I know that now. Thank you. <laughs> and when it was masks, when masks were the thing, you'd have to look at people's shoulders to see if they were enjoying it. <laughs> and if they went like that, <laughs> you knew you were doing a good job. I wore a mask, I was a big mask wearer back in the day. Not so much anymore. When, when you see a mask nowadays, it's like, oh, wow, kind of jarring, isn't it? It's like, you know when you see Natalie Imbruglia on TV? <laughs> I have no spicy COVID opinion, I really don't. I don't have any spicy COVID take. I'm triple vaxxed, I wore a mask. My only uh, COVID opinion, really, is that old people should be saying thank you more. <laughs> they should be saying thank you much more than they currently are. Like, you wore a mask, didn't you, mate, 20 years old? You didn't wear a mask for you, did you? You wore a mask so old people wouldn't die. <laughs> and that was the right thing to do. Good for you. You saved old people's lives. And that was right. That was good of you. You know old people, don't you? The people that put the hole in the ozone layer and who own all the property. <laughs> you, need to, you need to save their lives. Generation Z, you're the people that I felt most sorry for throughout the whole thing. Like, I didn't feel more sorry for anybody than I felt for Generation... Well, the people who I felt most sorry for were the people that died. But... <laughs> but after that, it was Generation Z. Nobody had it worse than you, man. Like, it's 2020. You're, like, coming into adulthood. You're gonna discover who you are. Sexually, politically, socially. You're gonna start drinking, going out. Like, discover your adult self without the kind of confines of your, like, domestic kind of house Hold, weighing you down, you can finally be you. 2020, this is the year. Oh my God, April rolls around. Back indoors with mum, you loser. <laughs> Get back indoors with mum for years, okay? <laughs> and don't come back out until you resent the only person that ever loved you. <laughs> also, how are you going to explain to a Generation Z member to like, be careful. Where am I, like, you know, how are you gonna do that? Generation Z are the first generation of people who view licking asshole <laughs> as a basic form of foreplay. <laughs> and you are gonna tell them that they need to wear a mask <laughs> because of germs 
They're shit eaters. I don't care about your germs going in. Oh, do we sanitise I've got shit all around my mouth. I don't care. I sanitise my hands. I've got somebody's colon on my mouth. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, no, no, none of that for me. Thank you very much indeed. I'm uh, happy in my relationship. Uh, and you guys are happy in your relationship. And that I was hearing about that earlier. That was, sounded very sweet. It really did. It really did. I've not, you know. Uh, I, I have noticed something about being in my relationship. Maybe it's true for you as well. It's certainly true for me. Maybe it's true for you. Uh, maybe it's true for many of you. As soon as you get into a new relationship, you go through the five stages of grief. <laughs> you know what I mean? At first up, you've got denial, where you go, Oh my God, I can't believe I've met someone who's not a cunt. <laughs> and then there's anger. Why are you being such a cunt? <laughs> and then there's bargaining. Okay, I will try to be less of a cunt if you could also be less of a cunt. <laughs> Then you've got depression where you go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm stuck with this cunt. <laughs> and then finally, acceptance. Well, I suppose everyone's a cunt. Let's give this a go. <laughs> I was a good single man. I miss the adventure of being single. And I feel like I was good at being single. I learned a lot about myself as a single man, you know? I was, uh, like, last time I was single, the last person I fucked before I got in my relationship. Mm. And I don't mind telling you, she was an absolute unit. That's one of my favourite things about me, is that I haven't been brainwashed by magazines or beauty standards. I like everything, all different shapes, large, small, it doesn't matter to me. I, 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 I like having a great deal of fun with anybody of any uh, size. It's all, it's, all, it's all good for me, you know? Uh, I'm like an Elizabethan theatre-goer. In the afternoon, I might go and watch a matinee of Tambalin the Great. And then in the evening, I'll go and watch a bear fight three dogs. <laughs> and I'll enjoy them both equally. I'll get a pie for both. <laughs> and in the afternoon, I'll be going, hmm. oh dear, oh dear. Tamblyn seems to think that like a, a, a godlike uh, quality to his existence will come through the constant uh, conquering of uh, different kingdoms. But actually, as he lies dying, he realizes he can live forever through familial love. Oh no. <laughs> and then in the evening I'll go, oh no. <laughs> that bear's just killed one of those dogs. <laughs> I was, uh, I was having sex with her anyway, and she said to me, she said to me, um, she said, uh, I like to be hit. Uh, I really like to be hit. I want you to hit me, and I want you to hit me hard. I like to be choked, and I like to be hit, and I need you to do that. I need you to be forceful, and have you put a condom on yet? <laughs> well, could you put a condom on, please? Thank you very much indeed. Now listen, I want you to fucking hit me. You fucking hit me in the ribs, yeah? However hard you think you can hit me, I want you to hit me slightly harder than that. Hold me down, push me, like hand over my mouth. I want you to choke me from the sides of the neck, make me think I'm gonna pass out. Have you put a condom on yet? <laughs> well, could you put a condom on, please? Thank you. Yeah, so just fucking open pants, closed, I don't give a fucking shit. I really, I love it. I really love being here, okay? Now, now remember to put the, like. Is that not weird to anybody else? How am I supposed to get into that character? You're asking me to be kind of quite viscerally brutal and at the same time sexually conscientious. Like, I put the condom on, but I said, listen, it's your own rape fantasy you're ruining, okay? <laughs> Ooh, have I made a have a word crowd tentative? <laughs> Maybe 
I'll do a Jamaican accent to get you all back in the mood. <laughs> They're good though, to be fair. They are good, don't do that. That's not even Jamaican, that's African, you fucking mean that person. <laughs> Cut. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Where are we? Yeah, anyway, great. Uh, but I'm not. I'm not single. I'm worrying about the future and my family and being responsible. And there's so much to worry about, you know. If it's not COVID, then it's climate change. So scared of climate change. I'm devastated, especially with kids now. And I think the one thing that we could do if we were going to help uh, end climate change once and for all, and that would be get... Greta Thunberg off of the TV. <laughs> because she doesn't say anything useful or actionable or anything that we can use to help make what's going on better. It's just cliches uh, 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 to make you feel better. These old white men in these rooms. These old white men in these rooms. They do not care about you. Do not care about me, these old white men in this room. I, I'm not here to defend old white men, but you know, that's, yeah, great, and what, what have we learned? What are we gonna do about that? It's just, and as soon as you criticize her, everybody leaps to her defense and goes, uh, yeah, well, she is a child. Yeah. So let's stop listening to her. Like, if you agree that she's just a child, then she's not worth listening to. We all agree. That's great. I had no idea. But everybody's so impressed with the fact that a child is saying something and a child's on a march. It's like there's a magic talking donkey. And like, have you seen a magic talking donkey? And then somebody gets a microphone and puts it in front of the magic talking donkey and the donkey says, forthright conclusions are best drawn hitherto grand experience. And grand experience can only be relied upon when you trust what has happened, what will happen, but crucially, what is happening. And only then can conclusions be met externally, but also internally, with grand desire and ambition. <laughs> and as soon as somebody said, hang on, that was just bullshit, that was nonsense, that didn't mean anything at all, that was rubbish. Uh, yeah, well, it is a donkey, come on. The thing is, the thing is, the, like, and here's the thing. Greta Thunberg's worst nightmare is us solving climate change. <laughs> because at that point, she truly loses everything. If we solved climate change and told Greta Thunberg and went, Greta, we've boxed it all off. No need to worry anymore. Uh, no more worries in the climate change department. We've sorted all of those concerns out. Uh, stand down. Uh, have a great time. It's all over. You, you, we, we did it. She would go, oh, oh, really? Right. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Um, will, will I still get to dance with Jason Derulo at the MTV Awards? Please don't send me back to school. And everybody's always saying, oh, she's so brave, isn't she, Greta? She's so brave. She's not brave. She's telling you exactly what you want to hear. She's telling you the easiest thing that it's possible to say. And the thing is that, like, most of the polluted cities in the world are in India. 80% of the plastic that gets dumped in the sea is from China. And I would have a lot more respect for Greta Thunberg if she would say, These Asians in these rooms! They do not care about you! And they do not care these Asians in these rooms. If I saw her do that, I'd go, wow, that's pretty brave. That really is. But she's not brave. She's a gutless little pig. You know who's brave, don't you? I'm brave. <laughs> because I've come up here in front of a room full of strangers and told you some very uncomfortable truths about an autistic child. Do 
you know what? I sort of prefer doing that routine when it's going slightly against the grain. Um, you going, Ray, making it sound like a rally. Um, actually puts me in a difficult political situation. I, I, I don't want to identify too much with the extremity of your opinion, but I do crave your love, so... Uh, you can see the position that this has put me in, can't you? Anyway, how long have we done? Who knows? <laughs> I, I have nothing really uh, left that I wanted to discuss. Uh, <laughs> It'll be nice to have the gulls uh, in the recording, won't it? You've been a very nice crowd. I think too nice, probably. I think it will alienate viewers at home, but oh well. Um, so I remember watching Chris Rock, uh, his special, and after all of his jokes, everybody goes, yeah, and then breaks into a pause and then goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I just remember sitting at home going, I'm not enjoying it that much. <laughs> I don't know, but thank you. Uh, anyway, a little bit of light-hearted observational material. Uh, uh, you know, you like, you, you're you know, a fan of the observational jokes, and you have seen uh, different people do different bits of observational, so I've got some observational material uh, that I like to do. Um, it's a, it's a well-trodden path, but it's my take on it. Um, it's just, and I, I noticed it, and I just had to write something, you know, and that's how observational material often works. I just, uh, I came back from a, a long-haul plane uh, fight the other day, and I just, the food was very bad. Have you ever noticed that? That the food, the aeroplane food, is very bad? You have noticed that? Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? I hate it. I just, I can't stand it. I really can't stand it, aeroplane food. I just kind of, I get served it and I go, ugh, like it's very horrible, you know? The most upsetting thing for me about aeroplane food is that somebody made it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was somebody's life, their livelihood, their, what they wanted to do. And it's aeroplane food, you know? <laughs> and they get back home from a hard day at work. <coughs> Hi. Hi, baby. What's wrong? Just got another customer feedback form through today. <laughs> Apparently everybody still hates what I do with my life. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry, that's so sad. Oh baby, well come on, we're gonna go out tonight, aren't we? We're gonna go and meet Katie in Garfunkel's, yeah? Come on, we'll have a great time. You remember that was happening? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, how's the food, baby, how's the food? Um, yeah, it's okay. It's quite good for ground food, I suppose. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? I just am having such a lovely time. It's actually a bit dry. I was thinking about uh, calling over the waitress to kind of uh, explain that the food's a bit dry. And I think they'd ex like respect my opinion as a fellow professional. Uh, they'd like <laughs> my feedback on the food. I don't think we need to do that today, baby. I really don't think we need to do that. I think that they'd like me to kind of give them a bit of a heads up on the dry fish and like let them know that it's not up to standard. As a fellow professional, they'd respect that. I really don't think we need to do that today. Can we please drop it? Not today. I think they'd really like it if I did give them the feedback. I really don't think they need, we need to, they need that feedback. I don't think anything, like, I really think that I should say something, don't you? I really don't think we need to do that today. I think I'm fucking entitled, don't you? Don't you? Right, what? What? Right. How come I'm the only one that gets feedback, huh? Yeah? Where's the faceless name of this administration? Garfunkel! Garfunkel! He doesn't seem to be here, does he? Why is it only me who gets shit? We don't need to do this again, baby. Please, will you stop? We've been banned from Nando's, please! I can't live like this. My whole life's a fucking joke. I tell people what I do. I just wanted to make food for the sky. People always say the piss. There's a lot of airplane food, that's gross. The orange juice tastes like piss. Yeah, well we outsource it, so fuck off. <laughs> I had a dream. Stop doing this, stop doing this. You are destroying us. by Katie. You are destroying it. You have to stop doing this. Oh my God, I can't do it, I can't be. Anymore. <laughs> This is over. How am I supposed to 
make you happy if you can't make yourself happy. God, please, don't leave me. Please, please let me. Please let me. And meanwhile, I'm in the sky going, ugh, I don't like that. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Thanks for being so supportive. Thank you. you know and you were genuinely part of something very special tonight I can't believe the degree to which he's just smashed it you were a great audience give it up for Alfie Brown one more time what a fucking special that's going to be fucking unbelievable